Bonjour mon petit chiffre, Amber here and it's time for February's books of the month. So I suggest grabbing some tea because I read four books this month and I have a lot to talk about. The first book is a book that I was very very excited for and looking forward to a lot because I love the author whose previous work and that book is Reawakened by Colleen Houck. Now, this book follows Liliana, or Lily Young, who is a privileged, sheltered, upper east side New York girl. Whilst visiting the Metropolitan Museum of Art, she stumbles across Amon, who is an ancient Egyptian prince who has somehow come back to life. When he finds that he's risen in New York instead of in Egypt, where his, his canopic jars are, he kind of panics. and. Um, using powers bestowed on him by Amun-Ra, the sun god, he binds himself to Lily and her, her life force, and Lily is forced to break out of her little cage and to embark on a journey to Egypt to not only find his jars, but to also raise his brothers Aston and Amos so they can fulfill their purpose and stop the Return of the Dark God Seth for another millennium, I think, or a thousand years. I think it's another thousand years. Whatever. Okay. So, um, I was reading reviews on Goodreads. If you're wondering why I keep looking down, it's because I have all my notes here, so I don't babble too much. I was reading reviews on Goodreads, and it seems like a lot of people didn't love this book. While I didn't love it as much as the Tiger's Curse books, I did. I enjoyed it. Um, People are also ca also calling Colleen racist because the main character is a privileged white American girl who is whisked away to a foreign land with a foreign prince. And um, I'm sorry if this is a bit controversial it's, or offensive. That's not my intention. But I feel like some people are overly sensitive about things. It, I mean, one white person surrounded by an entire entire world of people of color is not racist, especially when the other characters are just as important as the person who the story is told through. I feel like in this day and age, she, Colleen would have been called racist even if she had made Lily Egyptian. How is she going to write from a point of view that she knows nothing about? Oh my god, appropriation! If anything, be offended by inaccuracies in the mythology. I'm a bit rusty in my mythology, so I don't know. I'm, I too upset about it. I personally like a new interpretation. I mean, if the, the deities involved are characters, it gives them it gives them more life and more makes them in some cases more human, which is more relatable to, or more enjoyable to read. Anywho, like I said, I liked the book. I've also always had this fascination with Egypt and Egyptian mythology and mythology in general. I also appreciate the fact that even though it was fairly obvious that there was an attraction between Lily and Amon, um, I liked that they didn't immediately fall into a romantic relationship, that he, he kept a wall up between them. That being said, I did, I did, I found myself vaguely irritated with how quickly she started falling for him. But I guess with, with the level of connection that they, they had, it kind of makes sense. It didn't make me grow like a child at a toy store every time a mom called her young Lily, so there's that. It just seemed like that with Kelsey and Rin, it happened slower. I guess possibly because he was a tiger for a lot of the story. I liked the writing of the book. I think Colleen is a talented writer. A talented writer. I loved the brothers. Amon and Aston obviously have a very Rin and Kishan like dynamic, but I also love Amos in a brotherly type way. I tried so hard on reading this not to compare it to the Tiger's book, Tiger books, but it's it's honestly impossible. I tried to pinpoint every little difference between Lily and Kelsey, um, their personalities and upbringings, where where you know Lily is from a. Upper East Side privileged family, this, that, and the other. Kelsey is more from she's from Oregon, and she lived with like an ado a foster adopted family. They were all just like really laid back and chill. Or, or the fact that Rene Kishan turned into tigers, where uh, Amon, Aston, and in Amos turn into birds. <laughs> or, or the differences between in, in in this story, they are trying to save the world from Seth, whereas in the other book, the tiger books, they are trying to break a curse so that the, the brothers can be human. 
the end of the day, the stories are so similar. Hopefully it's just the first book and the story will deviate into its own storyline, plotline, in the next one. Which I'm pretty excited to read for no other reason. And because of the, the reawakened ending. What? <laughs> what? Okay. Alright, you can always... You can always get me with a good cliffhanger. I don't know, maybe maybe I just like this book because I love because of how much I love the Tiger's Curse books and how similar it is to it. And because of how much I like Amon and Aston and Amos. I ho hope that there's a way for them to be in the next book even though it doesn't seem like there is. I don't know, maybe hot guys sway my reading experience and I need to really work on that. But I am genuinely curious to see how this story plays out and hopefully comes into its own. So next I reread Asylum by Madeline, Madeline Rue. And in case you missed it the first time, this book arrives on Dan who goes to New Hampshire for the summer as a part of the NHCP with plans for a summer filled with learning with kids eager to learn. He finds out that the dorms where they'll be staying was uh, once Brookline, a former asylum for the criminally insane. He becomes fast friends with Abby and Jordan and the three embark on an adventure in the old wing of the hospital which throws their summer into a dark twisted mess straight out of Ghost Adventures. Now like I said this is my second time reading this book and I enjoyed it the second time as well. It was creepy but not trying too hard to be horror, even though it's, it's a horror novel. It was twisted enough to have you questioning everything. I really enjoyed the pictures throughout and then to even more uhness, that doesn't make sense. Uh, like I said last time, I'm quite curious, I would, I, reading this book I was quite curious to see how Jordan's story was intertwined with Brookline because Dan and Abby, there's they are somehow connected to Brookline and um, I was also very curious about the Professor Reyes thing what was I wanted to find out what her deal was it I I'm a little interested to see this book at least the first one as a movie and I say semi because movies usually never get it right but if hypothetically speaking this were to be made into a movie I would love to see um, Dylan O'Brien play Dan because I love him a lot and I he just I couldn't see him pulling that off maybe like maybe like uh, Nicole Anderson as Abby or something like that anyway so after that I went on with I carried on with this series and read Sanctum finally after a year so this one picks up a few months after Asylum ended Dan and Dan and company are home and back in school. Dan is having a lot of, of um, trouble moving on, especially when he hears from Felix's mother. The trio ends up back at NHC for some pr prospective students weekend, determined to get answers and to find out why they are still plagued by nightmares and visions and why they each received a piece of a picture from an old carnival circus thing with the words you're not finished on the back. I really enjoyed the first book and had a lot of expectations going into Sanctum. I didn't dislike the book. It takes a lot for me to dislike, like fully dislike a book and just stop reading it. But first of all, for the first like nine chapters of Sanctum, I found Dan's whole desperation for Abby and Jordan's friendship. I found it really annoying. I found him really clingy. I found him, it, it was, I couldn't deal with Dan. Anyway, I'm still really, really confused and I don't really understand the purpose of the, the circus, how that ties in. I get the whole, the Ma Deer thing, but I feel like it was a bit unnecessary for, for the story, the plot and the story progression. That I felt there were still a lot of gaps around that plot point that weren't ever filled. There were a lot of things that I was hoping would be answered from Asylum, like Dan's exact connection, connect, connection with a warden but I feel like a lot of other things were thrown at me like the scarlets out of the blue and I feel like the story in general strayed a bit from the the horror thing I mean there are some disturbing bits throughout the story like the whole Micah thing but it's more a suspense novel than anything and it was a little off-putting maybe it's a case of the sequels but I have more questions than I maybe should 
I also feel like there was a, like, there was way too much happening for like a two to three day weekend. It felt like I felt like it was like weeks, but at the end it's like yeah, these were three days and like what? How does that doesn't make sense? But also poor Micah, I liked him a lot, um, and I also really like that name. So to wrap up the series in this month, I read Catacomb, which is not the last book in the series there's a fourth one coming out but i think this is more of a prequel it revolves more around the warden himself and i don't know if i'm gonna read it maybe i will if if that means i'll finally get the answers from the series but i don't know first i have a note from february 24th 2016 at 5.07 in the morning my bad um i haven't even started and i'm annoyed just reading the inside cover Looks like a new plot twist is being thrown and it feels like it has nothing to do with anything. Alright, so this one picks up nine months after Sanctum. The trio are road tripping to New Orleans as a sort of last hurrah before college and also to help Jordan move in with his uncle. During their trek, which involves a lot of camping and pit stops, they discover that they're being followed. When they get to New Orleans, they find out that not only are there ties to Dan's family history Dan's family history in the city but a dangerous new group called the bone artists are after them or I guess specifically Dan right I don't know man um I I liked this a lot more than Sanctum story-wise it's definitely more thriller suspense mystery than a horror novel but I have a problem with how all over the place the plot line of this series is. I don't understand the necessity of the bone artists and their connection to Dan. I'm glad that they go into his family background, but I guess I just assumed that the story would um, delve into his connection with Brookline and the Warden because that's where it all started. I feel like this whole series of story took a hard turn from the original. It kind of reminds me of my one of my complaints about Twilight and how in each new book there were new random people after Bella for one reason or another it just feels like there's a whole new group of villains in every book rather than them progressive progressing throughout the story solving one big problem for one group of bad guys but yeah like I said I don't hate the books I just don't think they reached their full potential I had a whole lot of hope going in the first book because I loved it but um We'll see if I read the, the next one when, whenever it comes out. Those are the books I read this month. If you read them, let me know what you think about them. If you have any books you think I would like, let me know down there. Oh, before I finish, for March, I have started the Warrior Queen series. I'm reading The Forgotten Queen um, by Haley Elizabeth Garwood. I'm, I had no idea going into this with what anything about the author or the series. My mom found these at the library. There are, I have three, I think there are four in the series. It's a historical fiction novel and I will let you know how that goes. And then I'm also going to think it's time to delve into my books from Caitlin. So I'm going to start with The Host, which I've been meaning to read for years. Like I said, those are the books I read and are planning. I'm planning to read. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like me, feel free to subscribe. All my places are down there. So we can be buds and I'll see you soon.